out tonight about the leaked audio from an L.A. City Council candidate. Hal Eisner is live with the latest on what Isabel Gerardo said about police. Hal. Yeah, and there have been calls for her to drop out of the race. Some of that coming from right over there. There was a news conference outside of the L.A. Police Museum. It's all over a, a, a audio recording that was leaked from October the 17th. The pushback against Isabel Jurado, who wants to be the L.A. City Council candidate from District 14. We are here. We're not going away. The signs calling for City Council District 14 candidate Isabel Horado to resign are because of the answer to this question from a student. What do you think about Kevin Leone's uh, discretionary fund spending on overtime for police? Yeah. Uh, what's the rap first? The police, that's how I see him. Horado defended the comments, saying in part, I quoted a lyric from a song that's been part of a larger conversation on systemic injustice and police accountability for decades, but it was just a lyric. When you say something like that, you meant it. You can't just say something out of your mouth and not mean it, and you don't repeat a lyric like that. For Maggie Kiros and others from the community Gerardo wants to represent on the city council, the F-word spiked lyric didn't sit thank well. You, thank you. To the men and women in blue and to their families, we say thank you. Yeah. 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 So how are voters supposed to trust her? She was avoiding the question about defunding the police at every debate. And then finally, it takes this to learn the truth. When you're elected to office, you have a duty, a duty to represent all people in fairness and respect. Meanwhile, her opponent in the race, council member Kevin DeLeon, who was caught in an audio recording scandal back in 2022 involving racist remarks, said this. I was shocked, but not surprised. Uh, she's been campaigning on abolishing the police since day one. Nonetheless, when you hear the words F the police, it's, it's a huge, it's a grave insult to the working women and men uh, who are charged to protecting the lives of everyday Angelinos. After today's news conference, Gerardo issued another statement saying, quote, we're continuing to knock doors and meet voters where they're at to have real conversations about what's important to them, not hide from the people of Council District 14. Again, her campaign refusing to make her available for any kind of an on-camera interview. They're saying that the people in the district want to have more uh, food on their table and are not worried about the lyrics of a song. Alex Marla, back to you. We will see uh, what voters decide. For more on this, thank you, Hal. For more on this, let's bring in political journalist John Rigardi. You've been covering this race closely. First of all, just this idea that both of these candidates are embattled for something they said on tape is pretty remarkable. Do you think that this kills Gerardo's chances? I don't think this kills Rado's chances, Marla, but it certainly doesn't help. Um, you know, I think what we also have to think about is, again, the arc of this campaign and how both candidates feel about police. Kevin DeLeon has been strongly advocating for growing the department, as Mayor Karen Bass has. Uh, Isabel Gerardo, I attended three or four debates, watched them, and she avoided questions about defunding or abolishing every single time. Um, but we know who her allies are, so I don't think any one was really surprised by the sentiment she expressed, but I do think people were stunned that she made that dunderheaded comment. To your basic question of is it over, I don't think so, because back in March, both candidates got about 25% of the vote. There's a lot still out there, uh, but this could be certainly a crucial issue and a determining issue for some people who are on the fence. If Kevin DeLeon pulls this off, and you think about where he was at after his own racist audio came out and everybody, including the president of the United States, asking him to resign. He held his ground and he's able to win. I mean, that's one of the more remarkable political stories, is it not? It would be the uh, most fascinating political story I've seen in Los Angeles <laughs> probably in at least a decade. And, you know, and look, Kevin DeLeon, you know, no matter what you may think of him, some people will never forgive him, but he has strong support within the community. As I said, I've been to some of these events. There were loud, raucous crowds chanting his name, so he still has a strong base of support within the community. I don't think we can count either of them out at this point, but yes, Alex, it would be a tremendous tremendous and unpredictable comeback if he does pull this off. You know, John, you just mentioned the results of the March primary. Uh, Gerardo received about 25 percent. Uh, De Leon received about 23 percent. So to your point, very, very close. 
Have there been recent polling? Do we know where this race stands now? That's a great question, Marlon. It's one I've asked about five, six, ten different people, and no one has given me any good information uh, about it. So I wish I had a better answer. I wish I knew where this was going. Maybe there's the candidates have some internal polling, but they're not sharing it with me. Meanwhile, uh, you cover the city and the county. One of the other big county issues is Measure A, which is a, a tax to deal with homelessness. Uh, we have seen a lot of taxes in the past to deal with homelessness and not a whole lot of results. Um, usually they pass. How's this one looking? This one is not looking as strong as they have in the past. You referenced, uh, you know, one of the taxes. This would, this is back in 2017. Voters in LA County, not the city, the county, approved a quarter cent sales tax for homeless services. Uh, this would actually replace that. It would double it because that one is supposed to sunset in a few years. So it would be a half cent sales tax. Proponents say it could raise up to a billion dollars a year for services for uh, housing. But support has been soft. It's hovering right around 50 percent. As you just referenced, Alex, people seem skeptical. Maybe they haven't seen as many results as they'd like after shelling out all this money. Really interesting, the other day you had Mayor Karen Bass front and center advocating for that. I think what you're going to see in the coming weeks as the election gets closer is Mayor Karen Bass, who remains popular, having to really be out there banging the drum for it. Her and other people just getting out there trying to persuade voters to say yes, because this is a billion dollars. We have less than a minute. Let's talk about Measure G. Now, this would expand the current board of supervisors in L.A. County. There are currently five board members, 10 million residents in the county, so 2 million per district. This would expand it from five to nine. It would also make the L.A. County CEO elected as opposed to appointed. And, John, i got to be honest with you. I didn't realize that there was an L.A. County CEO that is appointed each year. I had to actually look her up. Yeah, there is, and it uh, and it uh, is not ultimately been that powerful a political position, you know. And I'm glad you brought this up because I've spoken to so many people who are like, you know what? Great, I would love to boost the board of county supervisors to nine people. It's too big, it's too unwieldy. But people do not seem to understand why we need to elect a CEO that seems like it would essentially be a mayor for Los Angeles County. Uh, it's a little odd, and there was even a new just campaign commercial ad that I saw today. It doesn't even mention expanding uh, to nine members or having a CEO. It just talks about reform um, in that vague term. So I think a lot of people are questioning this and what it would mean, Marla. So ultimately, a quick, quickly here, do you think this was, is going to fail? You know, I would be surprised if it passes, if only because we've seen eight times in the past, most recently in 2020, measures to expand the County Board of Supervisors fail. Hmm. Lindsay Horvath, who is the current chair of the board, is in favor of this. She's going to be with us live tomorrow night here on the Fox 11 News at 6 to talk more about it. John Rigardi, thanks for coming on with us tonight. Always great to see you. Thanks, John. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Marla.